Hello everyone, Zane here and welcome to another Final Fantasy XIV video. Today, I'm going to be taking you into the Variant Dungeons, and I'm going to show you guys how to solo all of the bosses inside this piece of content. Due to the fact that each boss has a plethora of different mechanics, but you only will see them once per run, I will not be going over every mechanic. I will only go over their base mechanics that you will see every single time during the fights. The first boss, his mechanics only change based on the route that you take and of course what you do beforehand. So I will not be covering all of his mechanics, unfortunately. If you guys want to see the other various mechanics that I do not show you in this video, I will make a separate video covering everything that is different. Alright, so under V and C dun Dungeon Finder under Duty, you're going to be taking two actions with you depending on what role you're going as. If you are a DPS, you want Cure and Rampart. Rampart for the defense for tank busters and Cure for obviously curing yourself. The other ones are not really useful if you're doing solo. If you are a tank or healer, you want to take Spirit Dart because this is going to be your dot. Because damage can be a little bit low because you're not a DPS. Ultimatum, not really useful if you're not with a party and Raise, you can't raise yourself. So if you're a tank, you can skip on Rampart and go with Cure and Spirit Dart. And if you're a healer, you can skip Cure and go for Dart and Rampart. It's completely up to you. You can change these while you're in there, so don't worry about that. Okay, so make sure that this is off so you guys can go in solo. And then hit Register for Duty. So we are going to be going from left to middle to right. And then the secret last boss that you are going to be needing for the final entry. Okay, so we're gonna start with the left side first. All right guys, so the first fight is going to be against Gurion, always. His mechanics will change depending on which path you choose. So Colossal Strike is your tank buster, so make sure you do your rampart to mitigate it. His exploding catapult will just release a room wide AoE. So you can mitigate this as well or heal through it. And this will bring down barrels every single time. Make sure that you go to the one with the blue marker because that is going to be the safe barrel. While the other one will explode in a pure AoE. It will do a catapult after that. Again, mitigate it and heal through it. And it will always bring uh, about the next set of barrels. Colossal Slam is a simple AOE. Just get out of it and go back into the safe barrel. You will do another exploding catapult, which brings down more barrels. This is going to be constant in every fight. And then Shutter is going to be where his arena mechanics will come into play. So for the first one, if you choose to drain the mud, he will do a knockback. If you leave the mud, it will leave AoEs on the ground and then he'll do a pushback just the same. So make sure that you get pushed back into the blue barrel. Another catapult to bring down more barrels yet again. This time he'll do Colossal Launch, which will flip the barrel. So make sure you look for the orange barrel and stand near it because it will flip into a blue barrel. Next is Catapult again, which will bring down more barrels, and then he'll do his charge attack. Go to the opposite side of the direction he is pointing to, and run to the blue barrel. Sometimes we'll be close to him, others will be away from him, and then he'll do another Colossal Slam. Just dodge it and go back into the safe spot, and you should be just fine. And then he'll basically repeat his mechanics again with more barrels and another knockback. So this time he's going to be doing his roundabout, so make sure you stand in the safe barrel first and then rotate with him. Don't go too far because he doesn't really move that much. 
So you go from cardinal to cardinal and then stop slamming. You won't get vulnerability up. This takes some damage if you screw up. Take more hits than one, you'll die. Another catapult, which means more explosives and more barrels. The shutter, which means he's going to do his pushback with the water. And the only thing that he'll do different eventually as you get him down to zero is he'll do a, another slam, but it'll be half of the room. But at that point, he should be dead. And basically, that's all about it for this fight for the left path. So the mechanics that comes from him alone will always be the same in every single fight. It says that you're going to have to deal with the arena changes depending on what you do beforehand. All right. So on to the left final boss, which is going to be Silky. So the boss in the left path is going to be Silky, which is also going to be the mount. Now this will have four variation mechanics, depending on what puzzle you complete or fail. So total wash is going to be a raid wide or room wide. So just mitigate it and heal through it as normal. Squeaky left means he'll go from right and then swing all the way to the to your left. Sometimes he might go right, so just be aware. Just stand on the opposite side and you'll be just fine. Carpet beater is going to be your tank buster, so mitigate as usual. Squeaky right is the opposite of left, so you stand on the left side of him. Chilling suds, his palm on his tail, or turn blue, which will do ice out of his cardinal directions. So just make sure you go to the intercardinal and dodge accordingly. Bracing suds, it will be a green on his palm. This means you have to get underneath him to avoid the damage. He's going to do bracing suds or chilling suds again, but this time he's going to move with slippery sl uh, soap. So either dodge his chill or get underneath him for his brace. Spot remover, he'll put AOEs on the ground. Just make sure you don't stand in them because you will get a uh, dot. Dust buster is a knockback, so you use anything to stop that or just do your gap closer. So just pick a direction where you have enough room and you're good. Total wash is another room wide, so heal or mitigate as normal. And this is where his variant mechanic will come in. So this mechanic here is when you touch all of the puffs during the uh, puzzle room. If you fail to solve the puzzle and you go to all the puffs, he'll summon brooms and will go across and sweep. You also will use either chill or brazen, uh, bracing suds as well. So make sure you look out for that and also dodge the brooms, just like in the Grand Cosmo. It's as simple as that. Most of his variant mechanics are just move out of the way as they go through a straight line. So fresh puffs, he brings down brooms, which he'll then do squeaky left or right after doing his suds ability. So he can either, most likely it's going to be his ice. So wherever it gets hit with his sweep is going to get the ice. So you're going to have to dodge those palms as well as him at the same time. So 
So trying to get him to be diagonal is probably the best course to dodge the palms and also keep DPS on him. At this point, it's just rinse and repeat until you're done. And that's basically is going to be it for Silky. Next is going to be the middle path last boss. So the final boss in the mid path is going to be the gladiator. You'll have four different variations of mechanics depending on which lever or statue you chose depending on what path you took. So flash of steel is your room wide so mitigate it and heal through it as normal. His ring of might you'll choose a marker to stop on. This makes sure you're outside of the marker that he stopped on and then get back in because he'll zap what was not chosen. He'll do this a couple times and there'll also be a variation to this later in the fight. Passion, get away from his front because he'll do a last minute AoE which you'll get a vulnerable if you get hit by his mechanics. So another rush or ring of might. This time he's going to choose all three, so get to the outside first, and then get back in before he gets zapped. Next is going to be another flash of steel, so mitigate it and heal through as normal. This is going to be his first variant mechanic if you chose the lever to bring down the rock if you failed the scale puzzle. So it's proximity damage, so make sure you're away from the landing zone. And then find the rock that's not cracked and hide behind it. If you chose the other lever, he'll do a wind type attack which you have to get blown up into the air to avoid the same attack. The other two variants is when you choose the statues if you do the scale puzzle correctly. So Mighty Smite is going to be his tank buster so mitigate it and heal through as normal. And then he should be doing his Rush of Might. Same concept as the ring except you want to make sure that you're behind him first wherever he stops and then get to his front because he'll cleave the back after the front. Wrath of Ruin will be his checkered board mechanic, so he'll zap one area first, then he'll zap the other, so you're going to have to swap your safe spot spots, while also dodging his passion mechanic. So kind of like Silky's mechanic where you had to dodge the brooms and also his attack as well. So Rush of Might yet again, except he'll probably choose a different stopping point, so it's going to be the middle. So get behind them and then get to the front. So another flash of steel, mitigate and heal as normal. And he should be going into his next mechanic. So Sundered Remains, he's going to bring a Shiva type mechanic where he's going to be doing the middle and then the rotation around the room. So pick the last one that's going to go off and then get to the middle when it goes off. So after this point it's basically going to be rinse and repeat until he's basically dead. Alright so on to the next boss which is going to be the right path. So the right path boss is going to be the shadow caster. Now he'll have a bunch of mechanics that you're going to have to dodge throughout the fight. Depending on what answer you give the door, he'll do different mechanics. So show of strength is going to be his room wide. So mitigate it and heal as normal. So it's like the other bosses. And then he should be doing his inferno brand. Which will change based on your answer to his, the door puzzle. So if you choose the fire he'll do these squares that will basically go in a straight line in each quadrant as they grow so make sure you're not standing in front of it 
If you choose Spark, he'll then use a different mechanic. So the Fracture is his Tank Buster. So make sure you mitigate it and heal through as normal. He'll do another Inferno Brand. Except this time, he'll put down these little sparks. So make sure that you are standing in the opposite direction and stand in the safe spots. Most likely it will be between the ones that are separated. Inferno Brand yet again, but this time it should be a different mechanic with teleports. Do not stand in them or you will be teleported as well. So Cryptic Portal is when they will switch. So find the spot where it is safe to dodge all three. Simple as that. So another show of strength. So mitigate and heal through as normal. Another Inferno Brand. Except this time it should be the Sparks. And they also have teleports. So make sure you're on the opposite side of the spark that goes off. So just like before. Try not to get confused by it. Sometimes some people do get confused where to stand. So another Inferno brand. He will do this a lot. He will bring these little laser pointers. Those will do a suck in mechanic if you choose the spark option at the door. So make sure you do not get in front of those lasers. Pure fire, he'll put an AOE on you so just dodge while also make sure not to go into the lasers. He will do another Infern Brand. This time is going to be the Sparks again. So we handle those the same way we did before, and then he'll bring out the squares again with the portals. So make sure you find the safe spot and do not stand in the portals. He'll do his another tank buster, so make sure you mitigate and heal as normal. So he will basically keep you on your his toe on your toes the entire fight, so they'll get complacent. Cast a shadow, stand in the second shadow while the first one goes off, and then swap. Simple enough, just like in the Hades fight. Show of strength, heal and mitigate as normal. Another Infern brand, so this time He's going to pull out lasers for the entire length of the arena. So let's make sure you stand in between. And then he'll extend them. He'll put down another pure fire AOE. So just go to the bottom or top of your line and dodge accordingly. He'll do another cast of shadow. So repeat the mechanic as you did before while also dodging the lasers. Another show of strength, so heal and mitigate is normal. He will do another Infirm Brand. Which is going to do the squares and also the sparks as well. But the squares will go off first, and then the sparks will teleport. So just keep calm, and that's basically about it. He'll do another tank buster, and then he will die shortly after. Alright, so now we're going to go to the last boss, which is the secret boss for the right side, which you're going to have to do a ritual to unlock it. Alright. So the final and secret boss is when you do the ritual for the right side, the Thorn Knight. Now he has no variant to his mechanics, so everything you see is going to be every single time. So the cannons and the mammoths are going to be a crucial part in this fight. So the cog wheel is going to be your raid wide as always, so heal and mitigate through.
spring to life. He basically springs to life the mammoth and the cannon. So basically stand in the direction of the opposite of what he's springing to life. So cannon on the right, you stand in front of the mammoths. Mammoth on the left, stand in front of the cannons to dodge both. He will add more mechanics to that later in the fight, so be wary of that. So get used to dodging. Next, the blistering blow is his tank buster, so mitigate and heal through it. Another spring to life. What he chooses will be random, so just do it accordingly. So stand in the path of the opposite, and you should be good. So for honor, obviously do not stand in front of him, because four means front. And then he'll just do a cleave. Next he'll do slash burn. Just basically stand out of the way of both. There will be a point where he will do a exchange, so he'll swap his position, which will make you stand in front of the orange AoE to dodge in between the cracks. Signal fire, just basically stand in the last spot. He does the AoE and run to the first. Another blistering blow, so make sure you mitigate it and heal through. You can also use faint as well to dodge the damage. So this is where he's going to do slash burn but exchange. So find the orange AoE and stand right in the middle. This way you'll be able to dodge both the side slashes. It's the best way to do it. So don't try to overthink it. So Blade of Glory is going to bring out two fire orbs. But you're going to have to dodge. They will just do basic line AoEs while also doing spring to life. So just trying to find a safe spot to dodge both. It's not lethal, so don't worry about getting hit. So slash and burn exchange. Stand in the fire or the orange to dodge the blue. Simple as that. Another Blade of Glory. Except this time, we got Slash and Burn. So, handle both the same way you would do normally. And you should be just fine. But really pay attention to him, because sometimes he won't do the exchange. I ended up falling for that one and got hit later on. So another signal fire, so make sure you stand in the last, and then go to the first, have they go off, and then another for honor, so make sure you move. Another cog wheel, so heal and mitigate as normal. Another Blade of Glory, so more AoEs. And I think this is where I get hit. Yeah, and instead of going back, I went forward to get the uptime. But I got a damage down, or damage up, but that's just fine. I mitigated the cog wheel, and I survived. So you can get hit at least once, or twice, and you should be just fine. Another Blade of Glory, and of course at this point he's just going to rotate through all his mechanics. So just, you know, plan accordingly, take them as they come, relax, and you'll be just fine. So here he did not exchange, so like an idiot, I got hit a second time. And I almost died. But luckily for me, I just threw up some cures, and I survived just fine to finish off the fight. So final signal fire he'll do before he dies. And another for honor. So that is going to be the final fight of the variant dungeon. So congratulations, you have successfully soloed all the fights in variant dungeon. And there you go guys, that is how you solo variant dungeon from left to middle to right on all bosses. 
Now, I usually don't do this type of content, but I really wanted to mix things up on my channel. So hopefully this helps you a lot if you're trying to do this by yourself. All right, just know that you will get synced up if you're alone to compensate for the amount of damage that you need to do to the boss. Again, if you guys want to see all the different variation mechanics, I will make a separate video just for that. Alright guys, so that's pretty much going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like if you found this useful. Any comments, questions, and or concerns, please leave them in the comment section down below. i have more than happy to help you guys out with any questions you have. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you're new for more Final Fantasy XIV content and join the first brood. Make sure you hit that notification bell next to my subscribe button so you guys never miss an upload. And join my Discord server by hitting the About section down below or hitting the World icon on my YouTube banner. If you guys want to support my channel further, I do have YouTube memberships available. Both are completely optional. So until next time, if you're ever walking the glorious light of Lord Bahamut, and always remember to keep forging ahead. Good luck.